Chloe Freddy finally has some competition. There's a new kid on the block and it's called Style Freddy. Hi guys, it's Steffi and today we will be talking about the differences between Chloe Freddy and Style Freddy. So I've been testing this program for a few weeks now and on first glance the programs look very similar. But after playing around with it, I'm starting to notice the difference between the two. I actually tested Style Freddy on my Twitch channel for the past three weeks and it's been great to uncover this program together with you guys. If you haven't come to my stream before, well, you are most welcome. It happens every single week on Thursday, 8pm UK time. Now their website is stylist3d.com and the program is called Style3D. In my opinion, they really should make it the same name. They currently don't have a price on this program because they're giving out free trials for three months. And it looks like they're trying to onboard more digital fashion artists to use their program. Okay, we are now in Clo3D. This is what Clo3D usually looks like. As you can see, loads of buttons here. As I said, all the buttons are usually laid out. Okay, and if you hover over them, they will tell you what they are. And you've got a manual and video here. So if you get stuck, you can click on a manual here. If you get stuck, you can also click on the video here, which will send you to a video tutorial, which I find pretty useful actually. It's pretty cool that they have that. So this is how Clover D looks like. If I add in an avatar, let me just bring one in from the library. If I go to um, avatar here, and if I choose female, let's bring one in. Here we go. So this is one of their native avatars. So we got a 3D screen on the left and a 2D screen on the right. Now let's go to Style 3D. This is Style 3D. As you can see, it feels less cluttered, that's for sure. All the actual buttons are at the top here. We've got assets, all the... What you would see here, like these buttons, the edits top stitch, you would usually find that on this side of the screen and they're all laid out here. Whereas here, you will need to go to the right tab to access them. And let's import an avatar so you guys can see. So if I click on this cube here, and if we go to avatar, we go to female, import one in, press okay. This is their native avatar. And in this program, you can see they have the avatar on the right and the 2D map on the left. So just a point of difference there. So if we compare, this is Clay 3D and this is Style 3D. Now they do have similar options here in terms of the, like if we click this, this is the skeletal, shows the skeleton actually. And I think we can have that here as well. In Clove 3D, they should have the skeleton one here. Okay, of course you can like move the bones if you want to. I'm sure you could do the same in Style 3D and actually move the bones however you want. Now, if we go off that option, what do we have here? You can actually make it white here. Avatar mesh, right? You could actually see the avatar mesh, that's cool. Cloth texture surface. I think we need like a, a texture in order for that to work. Cloth translucent, mesh. No, we need a fabric on there. Right, so we need a fabric in order for me to show you guys the difference. So let's grab a, what did I have? Graphic, trim, garments. Let's go to garment, t-shirt, or we can go to female. You can download any of these. Skirts, trousers. Let's download the trousers. If I double click it, press open. As you can see, it's on her, but not really. So what we need to do is actually press space bar that will simulate it or go up to here and press simulate up here. And you will know it's on because it's got this red button here and it says simulating. It also has the same options as Clove 3D where it's got accurate, normal and CPU. So I assume one of them is using GPU, just like in Clove 3D. So there's that, and uh, let's grab, also, can we add a t-shirt? Let's add a t-shirt, so if we go back to here, female t-shirt, let's add it. Okay, there it is. Okay, if I press space bar, it's gonna simulate. Boom, done. So, that is that one. We shall do the same in Clove 3D just to demonstrate. So let's turn this off. If I go to library 
and we go to let's say garment uh, female just double click it um, yes and same thing here you can press spacebar or you can press this arrow here that will simulate it now if I hold this down as I said there's fast GPU normal and then there's fitting so there's three options there if you want to turn it off just click on it and we probably should have done the trousers first but it's okay <laughs> let's find trousers to see what they've got here if I can find it blocks woman do they have trousers trench coats palettes materials project do they have trousers that's the question garment nope What's that stand for? T-shirts. I wonder if it's something you can download because right now I can't seem to find it in um, garment blocks. Man. No, these are all upper body stuff. What happened to trousers? Okay. I guess they don't. I might be wrong. If you guys can actually find it, put it in the comments below. Let us know. So this is Clay 3D. Let's go back to Style 3D. Now these options here that I was playing with earlier, cloth textured surface. I wonder what that does actually. If we go up to here to the fabric, this is the default, right? I'm gonna change this color to like red. Now one thing that irks me about this program is that I just changed the color of it, right? What fabric is this? Ah. Ah, okay, that's why. Okay, so with these trousers, that's this texture. With the t-shirt, that's this texture. So in order, in order to get this to change to red, we have to... We could actually select it in the 2D window. Is there a sign? Can we assign it? Yes, there we go. Next, what is this? Cloth thick, show pattern within thickness. I don't think we have any thickness on this yet. Cloth translucent. That's pretty cool to see if anything gets stuck. Um, what's this one? Mesh. This is pretty useful, especially since here with these two. Particle distance. Particle distance, if I make it 20, you can see how that changes. Whereas if I make it like 5, you can see triangles gotten smaller, the polygons, right? So that's the same as Clay 3D. Like all these features that I'm talking about now, I feel like they're all the same. Stress map shows you where tension is is in the program so you particularly get that like as you can ah, we can see it here actually good example you can see it here yeah the tension and it's color coordinated so anything down at blue is chill anything that goes up to red it's like oh my gosh it's too like there's too much tension it's stretching too much so um, that's what that is useful Clove 3D has that as well strain map Ah, same thing as you guys can see strain kind of similar so that's cool turn it off what do we have here fit map okay cool cool and show internal lines there we go that's cool and what else do we have here hide functions color style I don't know what that does but at this point, I'm clicking on every single button. Style line. How oh, cool. Okay. All right. So that is on style 3D side. On this side, I'm sure there's there should be trousers here. No way that there aren't any trousers. Let me have a look. Unless you have to download it from their store, but I'm not sure. There's no way. Usually with blocks, there's like trousers of some sort palettes preferences project render who knows okay so same thing over here let's just work with the t-shirt i'm also going to click on a texture we're going to make it also red because why not and press apply done if we go to style 3d all of these are the same as what we have here except in clove 3d they just kind of like slide out so what we have here let's see we did the skeleton what's this Textured surface. 
Oh, I think I know what textured surface is now. If I hide, hide this, give me a sec. Is there a way to turn the avatar off? If I show texture surface, do you see that? So if I go back to texture surface now, it shows the normal inside and that's really, really useful for when you're working in 3D. You don't want the normal sticking out. So the normal is the darker section inside. So now I understand. Okay, let's bring the avatar back. Let's see what else there is here. Um, just hovering to see monochrome surface. Okay, and if we go here, translucent surface, that's the same. Here, seeing the mesh, it's pretty useful. Same thing, if you grab on this side and change the particle distance, maybe to like five instead of 20. There we go, you can see how more how intense it is in terms of like the polygons it's going to be more detailed but it's going to take longer to like render out and simulate so we're going to bring this back to 20 for now what else what else is there um here we were here thick textured surface and random color surface oh cool i don't think i've ever used that function random colored surface that's cool and what else do they have here? Stress map. So kind of the same. Same thing here. As you guys can see, anything blue is chill. Anything that is red is like, whoa. You might want to fix that. Um, fit map. Okay, what's this one? What's this dotty one? Show pressure points. That's cool. So as you can see, quite a few similar things. Okay, quite a few similar things. And this is monochrome surface and mesh. That's cool. Wow, I only realized now that Clo 3D has this option to make the avatar white, like just monochrome color. That's cool. So that is the initial glance at this program. Let's look at the tools now. So with the tools, if we go into, I suppose, let's go into style 3D. We have got edit pattern here, which you can, you know, grab these things here. And what I find really useful actually in style 3D is that if you go up to the top here, you press this button, it shows you all the shortcuts, which I'm like, yes, this is very, very useful. You know, just having it here. Cause in Clo 3D, I don't think they have that. I don't know if they have a, like a shortcuts button. Maybe, I don't know. At least I don't think I've seen it. So if you guys, if you guys know, then let me know. And one thing before we go into the actual um, tools is the gizmo function. So the gizmo is when I click, maybe if I press A, hold on. You see this um, sphere looking arrow thing, we call it a gizmo. At least that's what it's called in Code 3D. Whereas when I started in Style 3D, it wasn't world coordinates. So I think it looks like we right click, I'm right clicking axis. It started off with local or was it screen? I'm not quite sure. Let me have a look, see which one it is. Yeah, I think it was screen. So as you can see, as I rotate, it also rotates with my screen, which is not what I want. It's not what I want. So I'll go right click axis world coordinates. And now if I rotate, now this will stay in the right place. So then I know, okay, this is front. I can move this to the front, I can move this to the right. Okay, that's gonna make sense. So with, so with Clo 3D, in order to make that happen, because I had the same issue when I started with Clo 3D, was the fact that you have to go to settings, nope, you have to go to preferences, gizmo, and you can change it here. So if I go to screen coordinate, it'll do the same thing. It will just turn with my screen. But I want it on local or world. What I, what happens with local? Let me have a look. Yeah, good. And if we change it to world, the same. Cool. So that's what, when you're setting up these programs, that's what you want to work with. Okay, let's go back to Style 3D. Let's look at the tools that they have. All of their tools are up here. As I said, it depends on what tab you have, but just looking at what they've got, I mean, they've got drop down buttons. So. Do they have less features or less buttons? I'm not sure because it's all hidden, right? So pen, rectangle, as you can see here, you can make your pattern here. 
Where did that go? Here it is. Bring this over, and if I rotate it, and I wonder if there's a way I can do internal lines. That's one thing I haven't found on here is looking at the internal lines. Unless they call it something different. Funnily enough, by the time I'm editing this video, I actually figured out how you use internal lines on my Twitch stream. So I'm going to insert this clip it from stream so you guys can see how to use internal lines. I've learned how you make internal lines. This rectangle button here, all of these, they, like, if you click on this and you click outside, it makes a pattern. But, let's control Z, if you go inside a pattern and you do the same thing, it turns it into internal lines. And that was my eureka moment. Anyways, back to the video. Huh. Okay, maybe in instead of internal lines, they've got this pen tool, which it looks like you can draw just on top of the pattern. Look. Which I'm not sure <laughs> how this will work, but let's say. I just move this line or do I have to move this whole point? Anyways, let's see if I can cut this out. Does it work? Okay, so it does work. So let's just drop this on our avatar. I'm just gonna put it here, see what happens. And it's gonna drop, right? So let's make that a different color. Cool, so you can see that, yeah? So as you can see, like the functions are pretty much the same. If I were to do the same thing in Clay 3D, I would go up to here. And it does have the same thing when you, if you click on it for a long time, hold your mouse button down, it will open up a new like selection list. So right now we're gonna use internal, oh no, not internal. We're gonna use rectangle, right? Gonna make a rectangle. We're gonna do the same thing. Put this down. Wait, this time we're gonna cut a circle in it. That's what initially what I wanted, a circle, but I just can't find it in Style 3D. So what I was saying, like internal lines, I was talking about this internal polygon line, internal rectangle, internal ellipse, and a dart. So I don't know where that is in Style 3D. Maybe I just haven't found it yet, but I'm gonna hold shift and create an ellipse. I'm gonna right click and cut it, just like what we did before. And if we press simulate, done, cool. And right now I can't see the difference between the two, so I'm just going to copy this, drag it onto here, and we are going to change the color. There. Done. So yeah, similar, right? Let's just have a look here. We've got edit curvature. Down here we've got add points, we've got fullness, Seam allowance, add annotation, edit grading, and then you've got your sewing here, which of course, these are like, the keyboard shortcuts are pretty much 99.9% .9 the same as Clove 3D. So I, all the keyboard shortcuts that I know from Clove 3D are the same in this program, or nearly the same, not all of them, but most of them. So if I was to press Z on my keyboard, that will go, that will highlight edit pattern. I can like edit this. If I press C, that would edit the curvature. If I press A, it seems to bring up this, I forgot what this is called, uh, but this feature here, but also you can still grab the whole um, pattern there. So yeah, and if I press X on my keyboard, that will do that. That would add, that would activate the add point. So I can add a point here, press Z again, and like move it. So these are all the same as Clover D. If I press simulate, there we go. It seems like, oh, <laughs> oh, garment is going through the arm weirdly. So that's another thing. Let's have a look. Is it going through it weirdly or is it just draping? Oh no, it looks like it's draping. Nope, it is going through the arm weirdly. Did you guys see that when I lifted up this? But yeah, that's another thing that is similar with Clove 3D. <laughs> I wish it wasn't having these um, garments going through the arms, but it is what it is with these programs at the moment. But yeah, we won't, we won't fuss too much about it. We'll just leave it like this. Okay, 
Let's see in Clover 3D, what do they have? So everything we just talked about maybe is on this section here. So we talked about uh, this one here, edit pattern. It's got all of the options here. You've got your fullness. You've got your rectangle, of course, polygon, rectangle, ellipse, spiral. You've got your internal lines here, which you can edit. What is this one? Base polygon. Now this is something I have not used before. You've got your trace. All of these, what have we got here? Seam allowance, notch, point of measure, edit annotation, pleats, auto grading, edit grading, fill, sub layer, there's so there's loads. That's what I'm saying with Clo3D, everything's just like laid out. And if you don't know what it is, you just hover over it and we can click, let's say puckering, let's click on a video. It will bring it up to this which is pretty cool because then you can just see how things are being used and how to use it which I think is really good and um, what else do we have here um, what is this edit textures we got graphics here are the sewing buttons free sewing eminent sewing segment sewing here and edit sewing here so it's all here and then on the side we've got more we've got of course the buttons We've got zipper, piping, binding, press, loads of stuff. Tape measure, linear measure, redrape 3D arrangement. Oh, I've never tried that before. Probably should try that. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, a lot of different things. Fold arrangement, pinning, oh, that's called a tack, auto sewing, free sewing, segment sewing, edit style line, 3D pen, another 3D pen, extra texture. So yeah, just a lot of stuff. And I wonder actually, some of these look repeated. Graphic 3D pattern? Ah, graphic 2D pattern. They're not repeated, I take that back. This one's graphic 3D pattern. This is graphic 2D pattern. But the icons look exactly the same, which is why I was confused. So yeah, there's just seems to be a lot more going on in Chloe 3D. Whereas if we compare here, we've got fold arrangement, subset layer, steam, add tack, fix pin. Like I'm seeing very similar like buttons or features. Graphics, they got seam taping, buttonhole, zipper, top stitch, piping, puckering. What else do they have? Tools, colorway, UV editor. Ah, this is where you can access all the other scenes. Okay, so here we can access the animation editor. And if we go back to tool, we can go to the offline render. We could turn on sync. And I think that would turn on the viewer. And I think that would turn on the V-Ray renderer for us. There we go. So I'm gonna stop that because my computer is going crazy over that because I'm recording as well as trying to simulate. So they've got the V-Ray renderer here. If you wanna turn it off, we just click on it, turn the animation editor off, let's colorway. UV editor, which is great. We love UV editors. Right click fit UV into 0 to 1. That's cool. All right, what else do they have? Interesting. They seem to have less features, but they have the main ones that you probably would use, you know? Um, they've got simplify meshes, um, which I don't want to do right now, but that's cool. Baking light map, measure. They've got all the measuring stuff that you need if you ever want to measure things properly settings and that is it it's quite simple and of course you know we've got these buttons here and we've got the resource library here as well so before we look at a resource library I just want to compare with Clove 3D so with Clove 3D the way you would get to all of these settings here usually you would have to go up to this tab here simulation animation print Emulator, modular, and UV editor. Now, if I'm honest, I only use animation and UV editor. I don't really use the rest, but if we click on animation, press OK. This is where you could simulate and animate here. You've got a timeline here. We've got print layout. This is cool. Never used this before. So if you guys know what print layout is, let me know. I assume it's for like exporting into the real world and sending to manufacturers. Emulator. 
Fabric Element will close and open any garment projects without saying please save your work. No, we will not. Well, we are not going to be using that today, clearly. But they have that. If you guys know what that is, let me know as well. I literally, I keep everything digital. So these prints, layout and emulator, I do not use. But if you do, let us know. Modular. What does that do? This is cool. Modular template presets. That's cool. And then we've got UV editor, which is, this is actually something I do use. And if we right click, we can reset UV to 2D arrangement, make them all the same size, grab them and fit it into UV square, one UV square. Press OK. So I do notice in the UV editor, this in Clove 3D, they do have more options that you could use. And if you highlight them, they have even more options. You could use flip horizontally, flip vertically which I don't think, if we go back to UV editor, they've only got two options here, it's limited. So Clover D has a little bit more you can play with there. In terms of the resource browser, which we can add scenes here, they got loads here, loads of scenes here. We could add, let's add this one. I'm gonna add it, press okay. So yeah, pretty cool. They've got this massive scene here, which you guys could utilize. And then if we go closer to the actual avatar, they've got trims here. Oh, loads of them. Cool. They've got buttons. You could use so many. Um, one that I used recently was a zipper and you could go to the puller. This is what they've got. So yeah. That's cool. And then if we go to graphics, I think they only just got this. You, you could probably add your own uh, fabric and material. If I were to, ooh, they've got quite a lot. There was one that I used recently, which was laser. And I'm just going to double click on it. Right, laser has been added there. And if I add this to here, you guys can see it, right? So satisfying. And if I add this, maybe this knit rib. Okay. Add it to that. Maybe we can add it to the whole thing. So if I go here, grab all of these. Aside from that, and we can sign it so that the whole thing has that knit rib texture. And if we go to avatar, Let's have a look. Go back up to here. I guess they got quite a lot. What do they have here? Garment. No, this looks like the home page. So we've got female. Um, they've got emotions, which I find pretty interesting. So you could use, click on this, it'll make an angry expression. Grace, grievance, thinking, <laughs> winking, sadness. Happy. So it's quite interesting that they've got these emotions. I'll just keep it on smile. And let's see, what do they have in hair? They've got this. Let's double click on that. That's cool. No hair. One bun. Pixie cut. So yeah, I feel like their hairs are. Oh, I've lost my avatar for a second. Their avatars look. Customization is pretty good if you guys want to use their native mm, avatars. Garment, female, as you can see here, suit, sweatshirt, on skirts and trousers, and male shirt, trousers, suit, sweatshirt. Nice. So, yeah, that's cool. And if we go to Clove 3D, let's do the same thing. Let's go up to, hmm, they got stage. What does stage do? If I click on this, oh, can I not add it? Can I add it or do I have to overwrite it? I'm scared if I overwrite it, it will just get rid of this whole thing. Um, you know what, at this point, I don't think it matters too much. Let's just overwrite, add it. Oh yeah, you can. Let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, so this is the scene. Pretty cool. It's the scene right here. 
And then, well, they've got a few scenes here, but it seems that Style 3D has more presets. What else do we have here? Avatar, female, hair. Let's click this hair. I mean, they've got a few different types of hair here you guys could use as well. I just haven't downloaded them. And what else do they have? Motion, pose, shoes. We got shoes, different ones you could wear. She's wearing high heels at the moment. Uh, what else do we have? We've got a size. I think these will change the size of the avatar. And texture. Ah, you can download the different textures for like to change the skin color of the avatar. That's pretty cool. So yeah. What else do they have? Fabric. Fabric. Ooh, we got loads here as well. What if we use silk? What do we want, guys? Let's choose this one. Double click it. Okay, add it. And then I'm gonna click on this and assign it with this arrow here. Now she looks, she's looking very Christmassy. <laughs> Let's click on one more muslin. I do like how they show, how big they show the textures. This is pretty nice. This is pretty nice. Um, double click, okay. Um, we're gonna highlight this on this other side, a 2D side, and we're gonna assign it. Nice, less Christmassy now. Awesome. Hardware and trims, let's have a look at that. They've got buckles, OBJs, looks like they've only got one. Buttons, loads of buttons. Um, cords, this is cool. And um, puckering. Oh, they've got different types of puckering textures. Ribbons, they've got a few. What's this, shoulder, shoulder what? Oh, shoulder pads, okay. Uh, top stitch, they got, what's this? Washing texture, what is that? Bad wash. Wait, what is it? Okay, it's like a texture, okay. It's a texture. And zippers. Puller. And of course they got a few as well. So, it's interesting that both resource libraries are good. I think it just comes down to preference on which ones you guys prefer. Now let's quickly look at the exports differences. So if we go to file and exports, these are the formats you guys can export in and it feels like there's definitely less you could export but it also feels like you've got the main ones in there, OBJ, you've got FBX, GLTF, GLB, Alembic. Um, you've also got DXF which you can export to pattern cutters and in Clo3D d we go to file, export and these are the formats you guys can export in so it feels like it feels like there is a lot more and of course you can see here you can also export to tech pack which is also quite useful. Ah one last thing I forgot to show in Clo3D d it, it is the renderer so if we go up to here render and we click render up here, it will bring up the interactive renderer, you're going to click on it to make it start. And here we go. I believe Clo3D is using the V-Ray renderer as well. As you can see, if you want to render out things, you can. You have the possibility and the capability to render out what you want to render. So I'm just going to pause it here. You can actually change the lightings here, which I'm sure you could also do in Style 3D. Take pictures here, change your settings here. These are your lighting settings, the image, video properties, etc. and all that. I personally don't use the renderer in Clo3D d and neither in Style 3D because I like to render straight from Redshift in Cinema 4D. But that's just my personal preference. And that is our first run through with Style 3D and Clo 3D. I'm sure there are more differences, but as a whole, the programs are very similar. It seems like they can achieve the same outputs in most cases. 
For now, Style3D has a free month trial if you guys are interested in testing it out with me. If you guys do try this program out, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I will continue playing with this program to see its potential. If you guys want to take digital fashion more seriously and want more in-depth tutorials, then head over to my Patreon. And let's keep in touch on my Twitch and Discord, and I will see you guys in the next video.